Whether or not you're looking for a shotgun mic, a desk mic, a super cheap mic, or something to go on camera. Over the years, I've collected a variety of different microphones that all have different uses, and I wanted to make just a very simple video kind of bouncing back and forth between them so you can hear the quality differences, both with no processing, some processing done, and everything in between. I've got the AC turned off. It's like 1 a.m. Everybody's asleep, so we should get some nice, clean, crisp audio samples. Of course, all these different microphones will be linked down down in the description below. If you want to skim along to find your favorite microphone, of course, there will be audio chapters down below. But before you do that, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, it helps me out a ton and give this video a like if you're enjoying it so far. All right, let's jump into it with the first mic, which is the one that you're currently hearing. All right, the first microphone that you are hearing is actually this guy right here, and it is made by Zion. It doesn't actually have like a product name or model number. I had to include it because it's come in so clutch for the last month while my other main microphones, this guy and my Sennheiser have been in for repair. This mic actually came with the Zion Crane M3 Pro bundle. I made a whole video on that bundle and you can see a lot more of this featured in that video card above that you can check out after this one. I really hope Zion ends up selling this mic as a standalone. Now you are hearing it without any sort of post-processing. This is just the raw um, audio sample from the mic straight into the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. It runs off of one AA battery. It has a switch that has three different modes to it, off, cardoid, and hypercardoid. You are currently hearing the hypercardoid with the preamps of the Blackmagic. It just has the best levels. It's honestly just a really good mic. And even though my other ones are fixed now, this is definitely gonna stay in the rotation. So if I'm doing two interviews, I honestly think these are gonna match pretty well. I'm curious to hear kind of the differences between these two since they're my main shotgun microphones. I'm really impressed with how this guy has handled. Let's move on to the other shotgun mic, the Rode NTG4 Plus. And now you're hearing the Rode NTG4 Plus. This has been my main microphone for the past seven plus years. This guy is currently sitting around $310 on Amazon, which for what you get, it is very fairly priced. It actually has a internal battery that runs uh, its own fan phantom power if needed for 80 plus hours. I charge it like once every six months, if that, especially since my camera has phantom power built in. But yeah, how does it sound compared to the Zion? Is it cleaner at all? I think they could be matched fairly decently, but I am curious if I'm going to eat my words when I'm editing this video and listening to both side by side, and if I see a clear winner. Anyways, let's move on to our next mic. So now we're gonna move on to desk or tabletop uh, microphones and starting with the Shure MV7. This is the little sibling to the ever so famous Shure SM7B. This one's coming in pretty good amount cheaper, hovering right around $350. And keep in mind when I say prices, that is for the microphones only that is not including any audio interfaces or cables. Those you can pick up pretty cheap. We're gonna talk about that a little later on or they can be ridiculously expensive. The only thing that I'd recommend for the Shure MV7 uh, besides that stuff is a new pop filter. This pop filter is its biggest crutch. It sounds okay, but it's plosives, the P's and S's. The front of it is so Thin. Patrick Tomaso, I believe, just bought the uh, cover from the SM7B, and that sounded a lot better because uh, it was thicker. I actually just have this from my Zoom H4n, so it fits really loose and it looks kind of stupid, but it totally works. The plosives are a lot better. The P's and S's, it's a lot thicker of kind of a, a foam cover, so I think it sounds pretty good. But yeah, this mic's great. I like how it has a little uh, kind of not screen, but touch interface on top that has uh, lights on it. The only downside is that only works if you're using the USB connection. So right now it's completely off, but if I'm using USB, I can actually change my volume levels and everything right from there. Uh, you can mute the mic, all that fun stuff. Yeah, okay, let's move on to the next mic. Alrighty, so now we're gonna be talking about the cheapest mic in my entire collection. And that is the newer 
NW1500, which I actually couldn't really find on Amazon anymore, but it was sitting right around $18. There is a NW800, uh, which has a little bit different style, doesn't have like this little small ball microphone shape at the top, but it looks pretty much on par with what this is, and I'm going to guess that it gives similar vocal qualities. And if you're shocked like I am at how good this, like unless you're really much an audiophile, like to the average person, this probably sounds damn near just as good as the $350 Shure MV7 that we were just talking about. And again, you can get one of these mics for around 20 bucks, but there is a major key to it sounding good and that is don't use the cable that it comes with these mics pretty much all come with a xlr to three and a half millimeter headphone jack to plug directly into the little mic slot on your old computer or plug into the three and a half millimeter jack on your camera in my opinion you are going to experience a vastly different microphone if you use that cable versus buying a $30 interface and then like seven to ten dollars to buy a basic XLR cable. So altogether you're gonna pay like 50, 60 bucks for a decent mic setup that sounds marginally closer than uh, those of us who have bought a lot of expensive microphones would like to admit. But yeah, this is the cheapest mic and Honestly, I think it sounds pretty good. Let me know down in the comments below. Are we all stupid for spending so much money on microphones? Anyway, let's move on. Yep, let's uh, move on to the next mic. Alrighty, so now we are talking about the Sennheiser MKE 200, I believe is the model number. This little guy is 99 bucks. And honestly, I got it because of its unique design. It's very small form factor. And I just wanted to try something different than Rode for a little bit. I had the Rode Video Mic micro for a long time and it was great but I didn't like how flimsy the shock mount was and I kind of liked you can see on uh, the other camera here that this has gotten a very nice compact design and there's nothing flimsy or there's no big shock mounts or anything um, but yeah this is just straight up plugged into the Canon R5 how does it sound to be honest I don't really ever use this mic ever since I got the next mic we're going to talk about this one I was not that impressed with um, for 99 bucks. I mean, it was kind of on par with the Rode Video Micro, but that one is only 50, so half the price. This one, I don't know, I've never plugged it into the R5. Why do I keep saying R5? I wish this is not the R5, EOS R. So, I mean, it is really small, so if this sounds good and I'm eating my words, then it's really nice because it is a very compact microphone. We'll see how it compares to the next one which is pretty hard to live up to because the next microphone I'm really excited about. So here it is. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we are on the final microphone which has quickly become my favorite and that is the Sennheiser MKE 440. Now what is unique about this one is actually a stereo microphone. Hold it up to this camera so you can see what it's looking like. It's real funky. It's definitely larger than the uh, MK200 we just talked about. And I'll start with the con to it is the fact that it does run on two AAA batteries and you have to turn on and off the microphone. There's no like auto on. It doesn't recognize when the camera's on. The batteries do last a good amount of time, but if you leave it turned on and come back a couple days later, uh, I have had where it is dead and I have to change the batteries and that's pretty annoying. I've also had the way worse scenario, which is where you hit record on the camera, but the mic isn't on and so then you just lose out on audio and that is super sad. The only good thing, again, I'll show you here, is that you can see the light on the microphone um, and when I'm holding it out in front of me, I can actually see it from the side. It does have a really nice uh, wind cover. Unfortunately, it is separate and it is pretty expensive. This entire microphone, uh, I think is another $350 one, if I'm not mistaken. I think I got the sure price wrong earlier. All the graphics will be on screen. But yeah, it doesn't come with a wind filter and this is another like 60 bucks, I think. Definitely worth it. And this mic, in my opinion, just sounds so good because it's so unique. The stereo microphone is all about picking up the ambience of the location. And it does something really interesting, I think, when you are 
at a kind of vibrant location if there's a lot of things going on in the background, where since I'm close to camera, it still picks up my dialogue really crisp and clear and it feels like it's up front and center, but you still get the characters of everything going on around you. Um, I'm gonna play a clip from this past fall when I went out to Seattle. That was the first trip I had this mic for, and I was at the beach recording a YouTube video um, but there was a lot of things going on. That's a really pretty sailboat. Man, this, this whole area is just really pretty. It's just gorgeous. It looks like during the post-processing process, they're doing less sharpening and less of that kind of clarity, extra crazy detail in every pixel. Everyone's skin kind of looks softer. Practice kind of the strengths and weaknesses of it because it can definitely be, no pun intended, rough around the edges. Thank you, street light. It's giving me a hair light. Nice. It just sounds different than hearing the background audio from other mics. Other mics, the whole purpose is to ignore the background and only hear this, which obviously can be good for a lot of scenarios, but I just find something really unique about this mic and it is crazy crisp and clear. And I think the stereo mic allows for better angles because we'll see how this sounds, but as you can see, I'm now fully on the side of the camera and then we come around to the front. Now I'm straight on and we go to the other side. And even in the video I uploaded yesterday or two days ago, a lot of times I was behind the camera. I didn't even turn the mic around and it definitely sounds different. Definitely doesn't sound as good as this, but it uh, still sounded pretty good. It, it at least still picked up the sound. So yeah, what do you guys think about this? This has quickly become, uh, yeah, it's pretty much my most expensive mic, but I just think it sounds so crispy and so good. What do you think about all these different mics? Which one's your favorite? Let me know down in the comments below. It, I'm sure you guys have other favorites that I didn't even show off here. The Rode Video Mic Pro is probably the most common one I've seen out there. For those of you who have it, how does it compare to any of these mics? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Get subscribed so you never miss out on future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.